All right, well, here's the third installment in my mini series on practice and using this gobs method that I like to use so much. And right now I'm on this first measure of animato in La Campanella. And this is what it sounds like if I just try to play it. Right. So kind of there, but a bunch of wrong notes in the left hand, maybe not quite as secure rhythmically. So let's get back to where we were and see what we can do. Okay, so I begin with the end of this measure where my right hand has to strike this last octave and instantly put the thumb in the right place. Okay, My left hand is supposed to be on this low G sharp that's coming up a little bit later, right? So I'm going to keep it there and just practice the right hand. Now notice I don't have it written down, but the right hand is going to live right inside the keys because the thumb has to hit those black keys so often. Right? It just kind of do this. I already mentioned this in the previous uh, installment, I think. There we go. And now we go back. That's the B part in gobs goal-oriented backward stepping. Okay, so I'm holding these guys and I'm ready to play my right hand octave. And now I also have to do the sleep in the right, in the left hand. All right, so I'm holding it down and I kind of press this pause button. It's like I'm this ideal robot that knows how to practice and after the initial, you know, playing of that half covered up chord, I'm holding it down because there is this pause mode where I'm able to think and not do anything. <clears throat> and I'm trying to coordinate a perfect hand motion, perfect arm motion, perfect finger motion, all kinds of motions. Right? And you could kind of see that uh, shakiness, so I'm going to eliminate anything like that. Right, try to have just a perfect snap. Let's try with the eyes closed. I already mentioned this idea that as I work on this four octave left hand accompaniment, my goal is to maintain awareness of how this octave relates to this because then I have to put my thumb exactly on this G sharp. Right, so from here, like that. And it makes it a little bit hard if I go into it cold because I haven't kind of used my body to establish where the G sharp is when I practice backwards. But still, I think it's a very good idea to uh, make sure to find that G sharp cold because if you can do that, that's that gives you that extra bit of confidence. Good. So. All right, so one more time. Okay, so I feel better about this now. I'm going to move it just past this chord. Now I'm actually going to play it. And I mentioned that even though this is going to be a pedal passage, I'm not going to use the pedal right now. It's going to be too loud and I don't need to do any careful coordinating between pedal release and my fingers, so I'm just going to use it later and protect my ears. Alright, just to make sure I can do this. By the way, you can see I'm keeping the second finger in the right hand right on that D-sharp. And it kind of wants to come off D-sharp, you see that? Because when I deviate my hand to play the A sharps, the second finger naturally comes off. And, and I'm not going to try to force it here because that's too much tension in the hand. So I'm just going to let it come off a little bit and then make sure it goes right back on. Mm -mm. Okay. So something like this. Now we finally get to where my left hand has to do 
that G sharp octave and I'm gonna hold it first uh, fingers one and three in my case one more time okay so far so good so I'm just going to keep going if things seem good all right now I'm holding that so now I have this very important transition in my right hand Wrong fingers on the left, third already resting on the G sharp, and you can see as I go to G sharp, the third is actually going to kind of slide down that black key surface. So, so all, all kinds of issues. Mm -mm. Holding this down and thinking, I've already done this part. Okay, so it's becoming a little more shaky, but I can just barely manage it. So my anticipation is that now I will probably start screwing up. Of course, by thinking that I am kind of predisposing myself towards screwing up. Well, funnily, funnily enough, I did not. So this idea of self-fulfilling prophecy does not always work. Well, now I did. I think I hit that fourth finger accidentally. Yeah, so the, the left hand is having some trouble. Now, it is actually quite possible to do nothing but left hand solo practice. Right, oh, there it is, that G, the F sharp. Good. Right, and, and I suppose it, it has value in it, but eventually I will have to put the two hands together. So I'm holding the B. So there's something about how the left, the left and right hands correlate. I think what happens is I move my torso a little bit out of the way for the left hand. Right, if I do left hand solo, but of course, if I do that too much, I'm kind of starting to get in the way of my right hand, and that's basically the main reason for why you want to use both hands right away so that you don't do these little things and don't realize you're practicing wrong until you actually start pushing things, pushing hands together. So, I kind of need to really decide on my torso position. By default, it's here in the middle. And I think if I just get used to it, maybe if I allow myself to go a little bit to F or G, it still doesn't quite interfere with my right hand too much, but gives my left hand just a little bit more room. Because ultimately what happens, it's all these upper arm muscles that hit your torso, right? And if you're doing something very fast, all these hits, they kind of really get in the way of playing. So let's do this. F, G, middle point for my torso and... Holding. Nope. Did not play that last one. So I keep holding, you know, accidentally hitting that F sharp instead of the G sharp. And that, when that happens, my solution typically is to do that. Because that way I can focus on nothing but that G sharp, right? Okay. And that way somehow my mind is so fully focused on that G sharp octave without worrying about actually playing the D sharp. Now I'm still moving my hand to be able to play it later, but I'm not worried about it. And this gives me something in the mind happens, something in the brain happens to where I can guide my left hand precisely to this G sharp octave. Right? Whereas if I now include this D sharp, well, actually, let's do this. Let's only include the D-sharp and the B, uh, D-sharp B chord in the left, in the right hand, and not worry about doing anything beyond that. 
All right, so that's my goal now. And now G sharp. Hmm. Okay, now that's C sharp and D sharp octaves together. They're already ready on the G sharp. No. That's okay. Get in there. Okay. And then finally, let's see if I can hold this D natural octave. Nope. Nope. Still no. So just by me having to introduce that little right arm shift, I'm screwing something up in my coordination and so not able to do this passage cleanly yet. So that's okay. That's why these um, practice sessions last just enough time. Obviously this takes 10-11 minutes, but without explain explaining it will probably be done in about five. Right? You put this idea into your brain, then you sleep on it, and then you come back to it again, and now suddenly things are easier, better, and so on. I already feel better about this passage, I'm just not where I want to be eventually.